Recently, I watched Insidious, The Red Door. This is supposed to be the final Insidious film, and it follows up three other Insidious films that kind of got more and more mid as they progressed. This film in its own right has some really great send-off aspects and has some pretty good horror elements too. I do think that, you know, using kind of the paintings and whatnot for Dalton and like that kind of being his demons and him getting his demons out that way, and this whole kind of metaphor that they lay out comparing the demons of uh you know the 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 afterlife to the demons that we kind of deal with in our day-to-day -day life i think that comparison is always interesting it's one that i do in my own music and my own art all the time and so generally speaking then kind of showing each person's outlet for that and seeing how they can kind of move around those demons via that outlet is a really fascinating aspect of the film and probably is the best piece of this entire uh, movie. Generally speaking, this film is at its best when it's trying to not be like some weird like jump scare horror that we've seen in every other Conjuring film, but is rather at its best when it is kind of being a little heady and when it does give you these moments of like what the fuck is happening and kind of dread via some psychological aspects rather than just fucking jump scares. I think that's all great. And on top of that, I think that the acting was good here. I didn't mind anybody. I think that generally speaking, it's just that these jump scares have gotten weaker and weaker as they go on and also on top of that Patrick Wilson is not the best director while some of his shots were pretty decent others seemed very flat and just not really having that oomph to them on top of that the color grading was very mid and beyond that I would say that the film was exceedingly dark in many many points of the film you know you can still see generally what's going on however for the most part some scenes you're just left with the whites of the eyes of the individuals in the shot outside of that you see literally fucking nothing and I would say that that is probably about 15 minutes of the film maybe and I think that there are some decent jump scares like for example there's this kind of claustrophobic psychological horror that they do with John uh, or I'm sorry Patrick Wilson and generally speaking I think that that kind of worked out well because it plays on this fear that people have surrounding MRIs and all that shit but also the weird thing that I find out about that is that you can just kind of crawl out of an MRI machine if you just like crawl backwards I've been in an MRI myself before I don't think they have some laser technology that blasts you or anything and so nobody's going to be forcing you to stay inside the MRI, you can kind of just pull yourself out. Uh, generally speaking, they don't recommend doing that, of course, because, you know, it's just not good for the machinery and you can break something, etc. But generally speaking, that's how it's done. Outside of the kind of like weird little bits like that, though, or like uh, the other general jump scares, I would say the other general jump scares were pretty much stuff that we've seen throughout every other Conjuring film. And again, just added nothing new. Considering we're about to get The Nun 2, which also looks extremely derivative of the first one, I'm thinking that this is going to be a running theme for the Conjuring universe. On top of that, I would say that I don't really need to do a spoiler version of this like review because I don't really want to go into too much uh, of the stuff because I think most of it is more heady and you don't even have to talk about direct plot points to get to. Um, but I would like to say just directly, the character of Chris was kind of interesting. I find the, the, the idea that she got put into the this guy's room was a, a little weird and I don't think they would be that careless generally speaking when talking about like dorming college kids together but overall I thought the dynamic between her and Dalton was pretty decent and having somebody to bring him out of his shell and that being kind of almost like a first relationship for him in some ways was really fascinating and overall is something that I think a lot of people can kind of relate to a lot of people I feel like have a lot of trauma and they kind of don't really come out of their shell until they get their first like really good relationship that really brings them out of that shell or you find like a really good friend that brings you out of that shell that's another example that could happen uh, but generally speaking again uh, I really like uh, the parts where Dalton does paint and then where the paintings get used to further the plot in various different ways. I think that's very fascinating although I will say another spoiler part is that they kind of do this thing where they show us parts of the first film and they reveal them as if we haven't seen the first film ourselves. Generally speaking they uh, have certain like things where like oh the dad attacked the kids but the kids were lied to by the mom and told that the dad wasn't the perpetrator and they kind of just lived 
like thinking that, yeah, the dad wasn't really the perpetrator. So Dalton kind of comes to the realization that the dad was the one that did it too via kind of this joint spiritual world that the dad and son can enter. And on top of that, real quick, I like the fact that there is this joint spiritual world between various different families and how there's like generational trauma passed on through that and how you kind of have to work through that as a family to get through it. I think that's interesting. But overall, I uh, wanted to get back to like these kind of like the reveal points uh, all of them were literally just shit that we've seen and sure maybe the characters didn't remember it or it was a reveal for the characters but it's not a reveal for the audience and treating it as such is very fucking stupid and i don't understand why you would do that unless you're hoping that people watch this film without watching the first film or that they forgot the first film um i do like that they at least kind of close it out in a happy ending way i generally don't like happy endings but considering like horror movies don't get happy endings very often and the fact that at the end we get kind of like a, another bit of a spoiler part, but the older lady kind of comes back and talks to uh, Patrick Wilson and it's revealed that she's kind of like this angel that was guarding over them the entire time. I think that's interesting, although I don't understand why they did that considering the fact that like she was a medium and not an angel. <laughs> so I don't know why the fuck she got to be an angel all of a sudden. On top of that, though, I like that the family ended up able to kind of work through their generational traumas. And, and actually, Dalton seemed like he was going to be able to enjoy school and, and various other aspects like that. I, I find it good and that it ended in a happy place. And I find that to be out of the norm for most horror films. So I like it. Uh, overall, though, the majority of this film is going to be very weak bits of jump scares and, you know, a couple of good pieces here and there. Some of the Dalton art class stuff is kind of cringe and some of the art Dalton art st uh, class stuff is very based. For example, the teacher says like, you know, rip up your painting to one of these kids and he refuses to rip it up and generally speaking it is true as an artist that you do need to kind of remove yourself from pieces of work and not really look at it as like this is my baby you have to look at it as like no this is another project and so you have to get out of this mindset of like every piece of art is going to be like your main thing at the end of the day you can always make something new and hopefully you can do it better that second time around but to put that in a fucking horror movie that's just mostly jump scares? Why? Anyway, uh, what did you guys think about this film? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a 2 out of 4. Now, I think that was higher than I initially planned. I initially planned for a 1.5 out of 4. But honestly, talking it out here with you guys made me like it a little more. But it was just pretty fucking mid overall uh and again i hate that you a lot of it was very dark i think that that was one of my biggest complaints and i would say that that's what maybe is going to actually now that i'm thinking about it bring it down to a 1.75 it's under mid because of how dark it is a lot of the time and how terribly shot it is sometimes um but what do you guys think did you guys like it hate it let me know in the comments below you can follow us on twitter and instagram that will pop up during the outro the rest of our links are down in the description we have gaming sessions for gaming content movie and smoking sessions for movie content crazy rocky for variety content and then the tripod podcast for podcast content. All right, guys. See you on the next one. I stay out of my head to the depths of the universe. It's a spell or a chance just to open up a new account.